Is it Bigfoot? Is it some kind of wild beast? Is it the- No, it's just Homer. Hi, I'm Torin, and welcome to Torin Loves the Simpsons. Today, we're reviewing Season 1, Episode 7, The Call of the Simpsons, an episode where Homer buys an RV to keep up with the Flanderses, then literally drives it over a cliff with the family escaping just in time, leaving the family lost in the wilderness where Homer and Bart get doubly lost, and Homer, naked and covered in mud, gets mistaken for Bigfoot, throwing Springfield into a frenzy. Let's dive in. As always, we're starting with the humor, and Act 1 is pretty slow. Couple of B-tier jokes, but n- nothing worth talking about. In Act 2, things start picking up. I particularly want to talk about this moment, when Homer is assuring Bart not to worry about wild animals. Homer tells Bart that animals can smell fear, which is a pretty cliche line, but punctuates it by saying, and they don't like it, with delivery that I think elevates that moment a little bit. And then it goes on to follow it with Maggie scaring them away as they mistake the sound of Maggie sucking her pacifier for the sound of a rattlesnake. It's not particularly hilarious, giving the joke combo as a whole an A-, but I'm pretty sure it's the first example we've seen so far of a joke combo, where jokes immediately follow up and build on other jokes. This is discussed in detail in Super Eyepatch Wolf's video, The Fall of the Simpsons, How It Happened, which is an excellent video that I have linked in the description, although I'm not sure I agree with his opinions on a lot of Season 8 episodes, which we'll get to in a few years, I guess. Anyways, so this particular moment, even just a two-joke combo, seems really important to me. This is the seed of what will grow to become a major feature of the show's humor from around like Seasons 3 or 4 through at least the rest of the Golden Era. I'm not surprised to see this seed get planted in an episode written by John Schwartzwalder. Like I said in the Bart the General review, Schwartzwalder is a writer we're going to get to know well on this channel. Or, well, we're not going to get to know him, as the first thing to know about the guy is he's super reclusive. So, like, we're going to get to know his work really well. You know what I mean. And again, my point here is I'm not surprised to see this guy pioneer the comedic style that would basically go on to define the show. I love the way Maggie disarms and charms the bear with pacifier. She's so confident and calm, and stuff like this is why Maggie is probably my favorite character on the show. This joke gets an A+. Then there's this memorable joke with the rabbit getting flung into the distance, which is memorable and memorable, but not a classic. I'll give it an A. Speaking of memeing, I get the feeling they're trying to meme with the frequent mention of the family believing Homer to be an experienced woodsman, but it's honestly a dud, and it gets a D+. It also seems absurd that they'd believe his claims of being an experienced woodsman right after he put the family into the situation, and after they heard him shout, I've murdered us all, into the distance. And not absurd in a funny way. It's okay, John, you do much better work later on. Then towards the end, we get the earnest, heartfelt moment between Maggie and the bears as they say goodbye. It's adorable and just plain hilarious, and I love it, and I'm giving it an S-. I overall think the Maggie bears thread to this plot is the best part of the episode, including plot-wise. But to wrap up the humor, we have a bunch of B and C tier moments that aren't worth discussing, but overall the humor is pretty sparse. For Wacky Romp, it feels pretty okay, but it doesn't end on a funny note, and that hurts a bit. In a sitcom episode like this, you don't want to end with several minutes of dull material, and that's exactly what this episode does. It's a shame, because the S tier Maggie Bears Goodbye is right before the episode goes dull, and that makes it way less memorable than it could have been. While the episode deserves props for starting to pioneer a new comedy style, that doesn't elevate the episode much in the end. I'm giving this episode's humor a C+. As for the plot, early on we get a little bit of a weird characterization of Rod and Ned Flanders. It's clear that at this point in their development as characters, they're just being used to fill the trope of the neighbor that our father figure can be jealous of slash competitive with. They punctuate this with Homer's gentle admonishment of Bart to not try to keep up with the Joneses, or in this case, with the Flanderses, before doing exactly that as soon as he sees Ned's new RV. And that trope is also exactly how they were used in their only other appearance so far in Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire. We're a fair bit away from seeing the modern, super-religious characterization of the Flanders family. They did get a couple things right, though. 
Ned's good nature with Homer, even as Homer casually admits to having read Ned's mail when it was mistakenly delivered, feels very true to the Ned we know and love. And seen in conjunction with Simpsons Roasting on an Open Fire, we see it's established that Ned has at least two sons, as in the previous episode, this was most certainly Todd, while in this episode, this is most certainly Rod. And while their voices don't match up with the rest of the series, they're most certainly two different voices from each other, so we have established by this episode that Ned is the father of at least two sons, so that's cool. Bob, the RV salesman, is slick as oil, and it is fun watching him play Homer like a fiddle. Every word out of his mouth is meticulously tuned to manipulate Homer, and Homer bites on every single lure. The rest of the episode continues to depict Homer as extremely confident as he displays his idiocy. He goes camping the max power way. This certainly feels true to Homer, and they got his characterization down really well here. I don't love the car dangling over the cliff bit. It feels cliche and played out. IDK, maybe this is part of what established that cliche in the first place, but it doesn't feel interesting or original. I feel like I've seen that exact scene in other shows and movies plenty of times. They go for something similar later on in Season 4's Mr. Plow, but in that case, Homer corrects the vehicle's balance by changing the radio station so the selector needle moves, which is a nice surreal touch, but here, the scene feels unoriginal. Same goes for the bit where Homer and Bart fall down a waterfall and end up naked. I swear I've seen that kind of thing in other shows or movies. And in any case, it honestly just feels awkward to me. They take it to a kinda interesting place with the Bigfoot stuff later on, and that builds on them being naked, but I don't really enjoy watching the process. As for the Bigfoot stuff, I just said they took it to a kinda interesting place, and what I meant there was that there's actually a massive and blatant plot hole in how they even came to the conclusion that it was Bigfoot. See this moment of the naturalist already filming the mud hole that Homer fell into? And see this moment of Homer emerging from the bushes into that mud hole? Very clearly in the shot the naturalist was already recording, but not yet covered in mud? It seems super dumb to me that they'd mistake Homer for Bigfoot when he's clearly initially caught on camera without the mud covering him. But okay, no, I guess I also do actually mean they take it to a kinda interesting place. Not a particularly interesting place, but kinda interesting. We get the first example of Springfield getting whipped into a frenzy over something, which is a key aspect about the citizenry of Springfield that we will be revisiting time and time and time again over the years. This particular example feels most similar to the Springfield Files. It's also an ingredient in plots like Marge vs. the Monorail and Rosebud and Trash of the Titans. As usual at this point in the show, it's cool to see when they get things right, and they got the Springfield frenzy right. The climax and denouement, as I mentioned during humor, are pretty weak. Basically, after Maggie says goodbye to the bears, the rest of the episode is pretty boring. They don't say anything interesting about Homer, and they don't have anything new to say about the town. They end on a nice Homer-Marge moment, but that makes it feel like they thought they were going for a Homer-Marge story, which is a complete departure from the rest of the episode, and doesn't feel like it wraps things up, or caps things off, or verbs things any kind of preposition. This plot establishes a couple important things. It really starts to nail down Homer's characterization, and it demonstrates Springfield to be highly volatile and suggestible. Those are the kinds of accomplishments that we'd like to see in a season one episode, so the episode gets high marks for that. But as with humor, ending on a weak note always hurts, because that's what's freshest in your mind as you walk away. And the rest of the episode before that was pretty mixed in the first place. I think the accomplishments, in spite of the overall weaknesses and the particularly unremarkable ending, earn this plot a place in B tier, but low B tier. This plot gets a B-. And now for the final rating. Humor got a C+, plot got a B-. And this is a wacky romp that depends on its humor. This episode gets a C-plus from me. You know, this is an episode that has just never really spoken to me. In a lot of ways, and at a lot of moments, it feels dated, like a cartoon from the 60s or something. It didn't even feel fresh or interesting to me when I was a kid, much less now. So it's funny that it feels that way while still being the progenitor of some key comedic stylings and town antics that help make the rest of the series great. I think I've enjoyed dissecting and examining this episode more than I ever enjoyed watching it. 
And thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed watching me dissect this episode. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications. Next week, we are looking at the Telltale Had, so I'll see you in that video.